At UC Davis, we began thinking about assessment as part of program review about three years ago. It was a response in some ways to accreditation, and in some ways a simple recognition that the world had changed. Even at research universities, where faculty teach in many different ways and with many different department aims and structures, we needed to look at our students' work in methodical, regularized ways and ask ourselves if they were actually learning what we thought they were learning. Some of us just felt it wasn't sufficient to say that we'd given what seemed like a usual distribution of A's, B's, and C's, and so all was well. Instead, we needed to look at the goals that we set for our students and the outcomes that they achieved. And then, we hoped, reflect on what we could do to better get them from those goals to outcomes. Our Faculty Senate responded with a change in undergraduate program review. They added a question in the process that required faculty to examine the learning outcomes they set for their majors and in some way explore whether students were indeed able to learn that skill that faculty believed they were teaching. Since then, the faculty who came into this new process across three years of program reviews, so about 25 departments total, have made it meaningful and have begun to transform the process into something that is changing the university. We've had the experience of working with these faculty through the slow process as each of them realizes that an old administrative process, program review, now requires a new sort of work to take place, program learning outcome assessment. We talked with many of them as they move from realization to understanding. They've had to figure out how to actually look at course material and student work and see if those PLOs are in fact achieved in some place that's concrete in the department's curriculum. And we've supported them in taking action, identifying good sources of student learning, developing ways to think about whether students achieve a particular learning outcome or skill, and studying whether the thing faculty want students to learn is actually effectively taught in a class in a way most students can learn. Because program review only happens every seven years at UC Davis and we have over 100 undergraduate majors, this is work that we will be undertaking for a number of years to come before all departments have experienced the change. Certainly, it's been challenging at times. Faculty are busy and teaching isn't valued as highly as research in this setting, a new mandate to look at student work as part of one's administrative duty, undergraduate program review, has been to some faculty an unwelcome burden. And who can blame them? We've seen diminished funding from the state, leaving us with aged, overcrowded facilities to teach in, and fewer resources to hire great faculty to do that teaching. And faculty are obliged to complete and passionate about doing research which provides the state with important innovation and gives us the knowledge we need to challenge our students to address today's pressing concerns. That research is more highly rewarded than is teaching in promotion and review is a given, both on campus and within faculty members' professional organizations. And so any additional mandate to put time in on the undergraduate instruction side can be seen as working counter to professional reward structures. With these conditions, more than a few faculty reacted initially to assessment as just another unfunded mandate that distracted them from key research and education work they were trying to do in conditions that are not optimal. Yet we have undertaken the work. Person by person and department by department, the vast majority of undergraduate programs that have come through review since implementing assessment have done it with a degree of seriousness. Why? The practical answer is accreditation demanded it. Our last WASC review left little doubt that we would pay a penalty in the next cycle if we are not assessing student learning in meaningful ways. Still, that's not motivating to most faculty. Instead, two things have been key. The first is an administration that said, we're going to do it because it's the right thing to do. And second, and most importantly, our faculty are deeply committed to student learning. They did it because once they understood it, they found that assessment reflects their own values and helps them achieve the kind of teaching they want to do. We're in the midst of a large shift at our research university, one from where we teach to one where we focus on how students learn. And one of the big ways we're doing that is through assessment. Because conversations in higher education about assessment are frequently negative, another meaningless box-checking activity from the administration, 
And because we found faculty finding real meaning in the activity at UC Davis, we thought we'd reflect on two important lessons our faculty are learning about assessment. These lessons might help us better understand why this work is important, and they might help more faculty decide that undertaking the work is worth their time and effort. It might also help assessment professionals stay focused on the big picture they should be trying to achieve so they can create a spirit and a practice of assessment that truly serves students rather than one that serves assessment professionals and accreditors instead. First, we've learned that assessment changes culture. We want to be careful when we say change culture because UC Davis is already a place that has a culture of student care. This is a campus where we like running into our students at Safeway. It's a small town. Many of us have chosen to live here because we like that contact. It's not a coincidence then that we involve students in our research and engage them in a high degree of mentoring. Still, these things are sometimes about helping the few with intentional mentorship and opportunity. What's key about assessment or being curious about whether students learn what we actually think they're learning is that it helps us create a shared value of caring whether our students are learning, one that involves all students. Let's take my department as an example, American Studies. We're a group of caring teachers, yet not until we started program review this year have we really talked about program learning outcomes since years ago when we had to create them in the first place. Now at faculty meetings, we're going to be looking at those outcomes and thinking about what course we should look at, what exams, what papers, and what criteria do we want to use to say whether students have learned the things we want them to learn. This creates for us a shared value of asking what's happening with our students when we teach, as opposed to valuing ourselves at simply being good as being teachers. It also gets us to look at our students as a whole. Not those who write great senior theses or who do well in our classes or who go on to do research or who do internships. And not even at just the students who struggle, who we do spend time referring to tutoring services and working with one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, assessment looks at the spectrum, even the students we don't engage personally outside of class. It says, is everyone learning what we want them to learn? And if not, because of course not, what can we do to help more of them achieve it? The value goes beyond the department. In fact, as departments go through this process, even if it's one person undertaking the direct assessment work and the Academic Senate reads the results and the feedback loop up to the deans and provosts takes place, we embed in the institution the value of caring whether students are learning and using evidence to make concrete improvements in that learning. That creates change. I would say that even the faculty who undertake assessment and don't like it, or who don't do it well, are part of that change because they're doing it. They're sitting and they're puzzling and they're figuring out whether students are learning and how we know that, not just grades, and that learning is taking place. And little by little, that helps us walk the walk of being a student-centered campus or a community of great teachers because we're engaging in the practice of finding out whether or not in our own small way, and again, maybe it's just one course or one learning outcome or one department at a time, we're really facilitating for students the learning they need to succeed. A second reason assessment is exciting to me is because of the potential it has for equalizing the playing field for our students. 46% of our students are first generation. Many of them are also low income and many of them are underrepresented minorities. We know these Aggies arrived from high schools in California where they excelled. They were the best of the best. But for some, that bar of excellence wasn't as high as our expectations. These students are often not as prepared as some of their peers, but they are just as, if not more, capable than their peers. And our job is to unleash that potential. When we dig into our courses and we ask how exactly our idea of what students should learn is actually converted, actually scaffolded into an experience of students being able to learn, we engage in equity work. There was a recent piece in the Chronicle of Higher Education on work being done in biology at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. It's similar to work being done by many on this campus, but it was so well described. A faculty member who was a skilled teacher learned that 
whereas one in 14 white students received a failing grade in her intro bio course, one in seven Hispanic students did, and one in three black students did. She dug into the literature, and there's a large body of literature on this, and she embraced inclusive teaching. What it basically means is she decided to embed in the class the implicit assumption about how to learn and make it for students explicit. Students learn the material then, but they also learn how to study. They learn how to recall lessons from class and write out what they can remember after class. They learn to write questions about what they don't understand and to share them anonymously with others. They learn how to write notes. The results were impressive. She closed the equity gap by half and the rates continued to climb. Now what she was doing wasn't really assessment as you are doing it. She wasn't looking at the one thing she wanted students to learn or exploring whether they learned it. Instead, she completely redid how she thought about what the subject was in the course, combining in all respects the what of learning with the how of learning. Yet these things are powerfully related. By looking at student work and really studying whether our students have the skills to do what we want them to do, we can then ask how we can more effectively make explicit what it is we want them to learn. And this is key. Engage in how someone learns how to learn. For example, if in American Studies I want students to use two articles to make an argument about, say, FHA policies in the 1950s, I have to ask myself, have I taught them how to read an article? Have I taught them what I mean by argument? Have I taught them to compare authors' points of view in the articles? Or have I just asked them to read, given them data from a lecture, and expected them to know how to make the intuitive leap to a good essay exam answer? In this system, instead of feeling good as a teacher because I've sorted equitably and ultimately assigned the A's, the B's, and the C's, and then invited students who might have questions or disagreements to talk with me in office hours if they want to, instead, I ask myself, why did the non-A's not learn what I thought was possible? What could I do to help more of them get it? And I then make the change to how I'm teaching. I experiment and see if I can get a better learning result next time. And this gets us in the space where we're thinking about what we can do to make visible the invisible expectations that we may have about what students are supposed to know how to do. And if we do that, each of us will then, in our own ways, find more ability to enable students to learn successfully. Of this, I'm certain. And this is what's required if we're going to be the great engines of socioeconomic mobility and community and cultural change that we can be in the University of California. We as teachers have to create environments where we question our assumptions about our teaching effectiveness. And we have to do that with direct evidence of what our students are learning or not learning. So I'm a bit of a fan of assessment. It was wonderful to sit in the room recently during our accreditation visit with many of my Senate colleagues who've been leading our work on assessment in recent years. There, people said something I didn't think they would have said even two years before. They said that they learned a lot through assessment, that it changed their perspective on teaching, and that it enabled them to be clearer in their approach. Some even said it was interesting and sometimes fun. It's a big change, it's happening quickly on our campus, and it's happening in many ways because of the work that you've been a part of this year. Thank you.